Hi, I'm Ashley Marie Adams, and this is Cameo. Today, we are sitting down with independent film director, writer, all around every man, and co founder of the Slam Dance Film Festival, Dan Mervish. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me here. We're it's so glad to have you. Wonderful here. to be at George Mason. <laughs> um, so, what led you to founding Slam Dance? I had a film uh, in 1995 that did not get into the Sundance Film Festival, and at the time, not getting into Sundance pretty much ended your career. So uh, it was it was very much all or nothing. I literally had a distributor say, oh, I love your film. We want to distribute your film. And I was like, oh, that's terrific. And then she said, if it gets into Sundance. And it didn't. And the problem was, this was in the mid 90s, and it was kind of a transitional time for independent film. It was kind of the Hollywoodization of independent film. Miramax had just become part of Disney. Fine Line had just become part of Warner Brothers. Fox was launching Fox Searchlight. And Sundance, which had been this great champion of first time independent filmmakers, uh, said, oh, we're gonna go Hollywood. And they started showing more films with uh, second time directors and, um, and bigger budgets and, and films that already had distribution going into the festival. And they kind of left behind this niche of the first time directors, which, which, of which I was. And um, so we had heard of a couple of independent individual filmmakers the year before, including Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the South Park guys. They, their first film, they, it was their thesis film out of University of Colorado called Cannibal the Musical, didn't get into Sundance, and they had done their own little renegade screening, and a guy named James Marandino had his first film playing kind of renegade in Park City, and we'd heard about those guys. So when myself and a number of other indie filmmakers that I knew, when none of us got into Sundance, we were like, let's do what those guys did, but but a bigger scale and combine resources. So we had a dozen features and a dozen short filmmakers. We all combined resources, came up with a name that would look good on a t-shirt called Slam Dance, <laughs> and, and it still does. And, um, and we just set up screening rooms in Park City, just literally down the hall from Sundance and, um, and really kind of reminded everyone, this is what real independent film festivals are supposed to be about. And, uh, and it, we, it was very successful the first year and got a lot of press and um, New York Times called us cheerful subversives and I've kind of that moniker has kind of stuck with me. Um, I wrote a book called The Cheerful Subversives Guide to Independent Filmmaking. Always plug the book. <laughs> and, um, and, so, uh, and so we decided to keep doing it and we've now we're heading into our 25th year of doing it. And, and because of that, we've kind of focused always on showing first time directors with limited budgets on, uh, that don't have distribution. And so we've shown the first films of people that have gone on to some pretty remarkable careers like Ryan Johnson and Christopher Nolan and uh, the Russo brothers and, and you know, so that's DC universe, the Marvel universe, the Star Wars universe. We got them all, all the universes covered. And, uh, you know, but people like Lena Dunham and Lynn Shelton and the Safdie brothers and the Russo brothers and the, and the, a lot of brothers, the Zellner brothers and, um, you know, uh, all kinds of interesting people have come through Slam Dance to make their first films and then very often their next films become very successful. Um, and, and what's unique about Slam Dance is a lot of these alumni uh, are also uh, become programmers. So like the Russo brothers, you know, now everyone knows them from Infinity Wars, they were programming Slam Dance, picking films for like three or four years, um, uh, into, you know, after we showed their first film. So, um, so yeah, it's become a great community of independent filmmakers. I really like how you persevered and said, no, Sundance is not the end all be all. It won't end your career. And you've created something that actually helps establish people more. So, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, so something still relatively new to Slam Dance is the DIG Showcase, which oh, is yeah. entering its fourth year this month, if I'm yes. correct. Okay, cool. Uh, could you tell us more about that and how it came to be? I don't know much about it, uh, oh. <laughs> but it's now I can tell you a little bit about it. Okay. It's um, uh, Sun for years. Sundance had done this section called New Frontiers, where they would show some very cool things, like not quite films, not quite art installations, like sort of in that nether world in between, and um, and then that kind of turned into this like VR thing. Like mm. now, all the hot VR projects go there, and it's impossible to get in and whatever. So. Slam and I started doing something similar to it called this DIG thing or DIG or whatever. And we do it in LA, but then we also do some of it in Park City during the festival itself, where we show like kind of the Slam Dance version of those things, like very cool, offbeat, weird, interactive, installation y kinds of things. And that, you know, I mean, the definition of film has evolved. It now includes VR and AR and we are the 
you know, whatever, <laughs> the whole thing. And, you know, and, and what's an art installation compared to a film and what's a short film compared to an installation piece and, and interactive whatever. So, you know, so these kinds of things like DIG that we're doing and, and what Sundance still does, New Frontiers are, and a lot of other festivals have little sections like that, a little VR section here or something like that. Um, it's nice because not every new filmmaker is making a 90 minute narrative feature film. That's no longer the thing, you know. And, you know, some people are making episodics and webisodics and, you know, boy, you never, you know, Google contact lens movies or, what, you know, whatever the next thing is, right? That could be the next thing. Yeah, so, um, so I think everyone has to be very flexible about what the medium is um, for these films and not get too tied down to what they are. Absolutely, there's a lot of crossover, so. Yeah, what's a documentary, what's a narrative, what's a mockumentary, you know, <laughs> you know there's all kinds of weird things. For sure. Um, are there any upcoming plans for Slam Dance that you can tell us about, or is it all under wraps? <laughs> I, we're picking, starting to pick films now. I know because I keep getting emails telling me to start watching movies, and I haven't. And um, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is the only thing I know is that this is going to be our 25th year. So there's, I know a number of alumni are planning on coming back. I mean, last year we had the Russo brothers back there, which was fun. Um, and I'm not sure who's planning on coming back. We don't always know because filmmakers are busy and they're working and if they're available, they'll come. And if they can afford to come, I mean, Park City, Utah, which is where we do it, is very expensive. So, um, but I mean, I always tell filmmakers, like, don't wait to finish your film before you start going to film festivals. Because once you do, then you're really stressed out about it and you focus on your own film. But you'll see a lot more films and meet a lot more filmmakers if you go to you know, whether it's Sundance or Slam Dance or the Virginia Film Festival in Charlottesville, which I've been to a number of times, um, you know, go to these places because that's where you're going to meet these filmmakers and see these films that you're not going to see any other place. And, um, and really, and you're going to meet collaborators. I mean, I've, on my last film, I met my producer and my cinematographer. I've met actors at film festivals. I've definitely met investors at film festivals. So, um, so yeah, the, I'm a big advocate of, of going to film festivals, whether you have a film or not. Um, I mean, I meet more people at, at Slam Dance every year that, in a week than I do living in LA a block away from a studio, you know, for the year. So. Yeah, yeah. the film and video studies department here always talks about like connections are the biggest thing. So you really need to put yourself out there. So. Yeah, and it's you know I mean Hollywood Hollywood. Uh, helps if you say it like that. You know. <laughs> uh, it really is true what they say. It, it is who you know. Um, what they don't tell you, I'll tell you guys the secret, <laughs> is that it's not that hard to get to know people. It's literally like Hollywood actors and producers and agents are a tweet away from knowing them. It's easier now to get to know people than it's ever been. And so you should, people should be taking advantage of that. For sure. Absolutely. Utilize the internet. Um, so shifting over to like your personal work, what are some of your influences as a filmmaker? Uh, well, I think my favorite film was Repo Man, Alex Cox's film. And then, uh, cause I, that was the one I, I saw it like in high school and I was like, oh wow. And it, he, would, he had just come out of UCLA. It was essentially his UCLA thesis film or post thesis film. And I was like, oh wow, this is a really cool film that is like genre defying and just, and is doable. Like I could see how they made this mm -hmm. film, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I could do something like that. Um, so that was a big influence on me. And then um, I was very lucky enough to be kind of mentored by uh, Robert Altman, because um, uh, I got to know his grandson is one of my producing partners. And so I got to know him and he gave me great advice. And um, uh, Harold Ramis, the late Harold Ramis gave me great advice. Uh, and it was the same thing. Like I didn't know him from Spit, but he, we were both alumni of the same college and I just, called him out of the blue or called his agent, left a message and called me back. That's pretty right. awesome. And I said, oh, do you have any advice for making a comedy? And he said, yeah, you got a piece of paper? I said, yeah, I got a piece of paper. He said, you got a pencil? I said, yeah, I got a pencil. So write this down. I said, yeah. So rule number one, I said, hire Bill Murray. Hire Bill Murray. Right. So rule number two, <laughs> rule number two, turn on camera. Wait, let's go back to rule number one. How do you get Bill Murray? <laughs> I, said, I don't know, Bill, we're making a movie. So, um, but yeah, but that sh kind of shows like people are accessible and they'll, you know, uh, if you meet them, or, and, and certainly film festivals, again, are a great place to meet, you know, experienced famous directors or your idols or whoever, you know, and because they're kind of off their guard and they don't have agents and assistants around them, and you can yeah. meet actors, <laughs> you know, play pool with them or croquet. I played cro croquet at a festival last year with Leah Thompson, you know, from Back to the Future. 
Wow. Like, that was weird, but cool, <laughs> you know, right? So. Very awesome. Yeah. She was a good player, too. Wow. Just saying, just if you ever. Did she, like, win Don't everything? wager again. <laughs> yeah. We were behind uh, for the first three rounds, and then we came back to the future and won. So, <laughs> um, Very awesome. Well, how much has the independent film market changed from when you first entered it? It's funny you say the independent film market rather than independent films. So the technology behind films has changed quite a bit. The mm -hmm. first film I did was shot on 35 millimeter film. You know, Panavision gave us cameras and we were shooting on short ends and had to get everything processed and dailies were more like weeklies. So, and we didn't even have a monitor. Like I, mm -hmm. you know, had to like look through the eyepiece and my cinematographer was like, it looks good to me. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, moving on. You know, like no, mon like, which was very, you know, pre-1960, like we just had the cheapest cameras from Panavision. Anyway, and so now obviously technology, technologically, and then also releasing a film and getting film into festivals was a lot more cumbersome. I mean, prints of films were literally 50 pounds each. Mm. That's why films are 90 minutes long, because at 90 minutes, there are only four reels and you can fit them into one box. If you made a longer film, you had to have much stronger <laughs> muscles. So. Um, now, obviously, technologically, it's, you can shoot a film on an iPhone, you can shoot a film on a DSLR, you can shoot a film on anything digital. Um, but, uh, but that can be a little deceptive because I think when you said the word independent market, the actual process of getting your film out there to an audience, I don't think has changed at all okay. in 25 years or probably 30 years. Um, there are still a key number of festivals that if you get into, if you get into Sundance, you're golden. But not even then, you know, even if you're in Sundance, still, you know, only like 5%, no, like 2% of the independent films made, 1% maybe, um, get what I call meaningful distribution, like get a, you know, an A24 or a Fox Searchlight distribution, like something that like hits the national like mm -hmm. zeitgeist. Um, everything else, you're doing, you know, either a small distributor or self-distribution or an aggregator or whatever. You can get your film out there, but as I talked about today earlier, you've got to strap on a sandwich board, whether it's a real one. And I've worn real sandwich boards from 25 years ago. I was doing it in front of in L.A. at a theater, and two months ago I was doing it in L.A. at a theater wearing a sandwich board. Um, or you're doing it digitally. You're going on Facebook and Snapchat and Insta Snap. And, <laughs> whatever Facebook, you know, whatever the thing is that year, and you're getting the word out there. Please come see my movie. Please come see my movie. And 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 you can see it with independent films and independent filmmakers. You know, the Safdie brothers or Sean Baker, who are all Slamdance alumni, by the way. You know, they even when they have A24 distributing their films and have Robert Pattinson in them or whoever, they're still on Twitter and Facebook every day pushing their film. You know, even. Hollywood filmmakers like Chris McQuarrie or Ryan Johnson, who are also both Slam Dance alumni, by the way, uh, you know, when they're making Mission Impossible or Star Wars, they're still on Twitter every day, you know, answering mm -hmm. questions directly to fans and doing essentially Q and A's. Um, and I think that's really essential, whether you're making a $300 million studio film or a 10 minute short. Very true. I can and I think that. that hasn't changed. And I don't think that's changed even since the silent era. Like you read books from mm -hmm. filmmakers in the thirties and forties and they kind of were doing the same thing. You know, there's a great story about a theater in Nebraska where in the 30s, like during the depression, to promote a film, they would give away a cow, like before the screening. Wow, like, wow that's that is a good idea, I should do that. Marketing I've, th times. I've thrown raw steak at audiences before. <laughs> was there? It was wrapped in plastic, but still, you know. Just to give them free food or like? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it was good. It got, it got the local LA, um, news to cover it very awesome. whatever it takes so. well thank you dan so much for sitting down with us and having sure. the cameo and thank you so much for coming to mason and teaching our students uh all your wisdom sure go george mason <laughs> um do you have any uh, fighting what are you the fighting masons um wow i'm not the we're patriots. the patriots yeah patriots. <laughs> um okay. but uh would you have any like twitter handles that you would like to yeah, you can, on the Twitter, you can follow me at, at Dan Mervish, D-A-N-M-I-R-V-I-S-H. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook. I'm out of friends, but you can follow me oh. on Facebook. So, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, Twitter. And then, and then if you want to just go to my website, which has a lot more stuff, that's at uh, danmervish.com. Amazing. And if you want to see my new film, Bernard and Huey, uh, well, it's screening in 
Baltimore tomorrow, but uh, but you can get it on video on demand. It's on iTunes already. Um, and um, my book is called The Cheerful Subversive's Guide to Independent Filmmaking, and that is available on Amazon, wherever fine Amazons are sold. So. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you again. Yeah, thank and you. this has been Cameo with Dan Mervish.